Hey, what's up? Terrence M here and got a video for you guys. Uh, something I've been working on. So I know that tons and tons of you just love the uh, tier list and uh, like act one tier lists. Specifically are the only ones that I think are of any value and I've said that I would update them before. So I figured I'd make a video for you guys. So these are the tier lists that I've done in the past, but what I've been working on is so much better than these tier lists. So using Tableau, which is like a data visualization tool, I have taken my Slay the Spire stats and put a bunch of them together, most of it, as far as cards uh, in the dashboard for you guys. So this first tab is just characters, a table showing wins and losses. Uh, right now it's sorted by the last 1,000 runs, so that is all of my runs for the past two years now, basically. Uh, starting all the way back in November 2020. Uh, this is the time when the, the patch that changed all the cards and stuff, uh, Blade Dance, etc. Phantasma Killer became a useful card. Reprogram upgrade is an actual upgrade. That patch. Um, so there's that. There is a bit of progression. If you go even farther, there's even more progression, but like there's some pretty low side uh, one right here and then just progressively better for the most part, but this is one right by month, which is not the best of uh, measures, especially if you're not playing a ton of games every month. I kind of mostly just made this as a meme because I was interested uh, when Jarbs posted about his win rate for the month when he got his streak. Uh, but yeah, it's like 33%, but it's only six games. So there's like very big swings if there's a couple more games played that month. But this is all filterable. Um, most of these tabs will have a uh, image filter. You click on for each of the characters as well as some other filters. And uh, like for Defect, which we've played a bunch recently, almost 400. Uh, this is just my Defect game show last year. And you can filter it down by 200, 100, 50, and 1,000, just depending on however many games you would like to see and what you'd like to know. So there's that. You guys have options for that. Um, also, you can follow the other socials and stuff. Remember to like the video if you enjoy it and this kind of content. But the things that I know that you guys really want is the next app, my card pick rate. So this is so much better than a tier list video because it's pretty static. It is a very general sense and there's so many different things that happen in a spire run. Even if we do try and narrow it down only to act one, there can be very big differences. Like, let's look at Ironclad, right? Let's click over here. Cool, cool. Got Impervious with a bunch. I am pretty sure there should be a Battle Trance above this, but I will look into that. Something may have happened. But um, let's just scroll down. Two that I definitely want to point out. Oh, okay, okay. But this isn't Act 1. This is all Acts. That was the problem. Got a filter. Yeah. All right. So Ironclad Act 1. Baltrans, highest feed. Pretty high. Uh, two I want to point out are Inflame at 68% pick rate. If we scroll all the way down, we'll see Demon Form at 19% pick rate. Demon Form's not very good. It's... Cost three energy to put in play. You're gonna have a very hard time getting in, into play at all in any hallway fights. And non-slow 
boss or elite fights. But let's take a look at Hexagos. Hexagos is definitely a boss that's killed me a ton on Ironclad. And Inflame shoots all the way up to 90% pick rate, just having that extra strength to make sure you could uh, win the 9 turn race to kill Hexagos before the big attack, the 6x6, and the upgraded burns. You probably don't survive the 6x6 usually. But making sure that you can kill in time, Inflame has increased in priority and also uh, Demon Form. From 19 or 18% all the way up to 44%, which is cool. That's just, there's definitely like variability in the value of cards depending on uh, the boss and things like that. We could also quickly look at like, I don't know, slime boss or something. Not as, it's still a damage race kind of fight, but it's not generally as difficult or hard to evaluate as uh, Slime Boss, and we can see where is Inflame. It's nowhere near that 90% that it was before, but cards like Evolved. That is now all the way up to 60%. So yeah, there's tons of things that change based off of the boss that you're going to be fighting, like, for example, Automaton. You may not want thing status things, so you may want more status things to be able to get like either don't have much and you want to be able and you don't you wouldn't get through the artifact anyway or you do have some and you want to be able to get through all the artifact but there's tons and tons of different things uh the card win rate side is not as valuable i think defect is a pretty nice uh example of this blizzard and meteor strike are not the most exceptional cards, but they are the highest win rate cards here. And that is kind of just a function of them being things that I'm not picking very often. But if there is a situation where I'm picking them in, they will be very, very strong. So if you have a bunch of frost generation, then you're pretty decent on block. And then you have blizzard for scaling to be able to deal some damage as well. And I also, Pick it generally with like Echo Forms too, so you have Echo Forms for your Frost. And then a Blizzard to finish the fight off, you should be pretty good. And then Meteor Strike, it's a 5 cost card, you're really not picking this in many situations. But it can help you with either going infinite, or just energy based things, as well as Sneko, so it's going to be really strong in those runs. So yeah, maybe don't put too much weight in the win rate it's just nice to have alongside and, and mostly focus on the card pick rate for di different situations and uh let's move on to this scatter plot which has all the cards and then win rate and win rate going up and pick rate going across uh it's not super useful to look at all the cards like this. You do see the standouts of like Vault, Scrawl, Wraith Form, Talk to the Hand. Um, but let's see, let's see. What would be a great example? Watcher, of course. Now, Watcher is pretty known for having some really, really, really good cards like Vault, Scrawl, Talk to the Hand, Rush Down. Empty Mind, Tantrum. And then there's a bunch of cards that you don't really pick that much that are all below the average pick rate line. Uh, there are some standouts from a time where I was crazy and really enjoyed picking Wish and Spirit Shield. But besides that, looks pretty good. It Besides that, I think it's a pretty good uh, representation of like all the pretty mech cards and then all the great watcher cards but not every character is like that like see silent and it's probably a bit more spread out yeah it's not as uh grouped together as far as the below average pick rate uh okay 
Cool. I mean, <laughs> then there's Wraith Worm all the way out. <laughs> Sick. Uh, but yeah, that's it for that. Uh, we also have this enemy dashboard. So this is enemies by average damage taken. The uh, bigger the name is here in this word cloud, the higher average damage I take from that fight. And this is a filter. You can click on it and filter down to just that enemy. So let's do, I don't know, defect and gremlin knob. So I love buffer starts. Buffer is super sick into Act 1 Elites, especially if there's a fire to upgrade it. And of course, if you have a buffer, you're not taking very much damage to knob. Only average damage taken of four. You have Sunder, which is tons of damage. You're not taking that much damage to Nob. Uh, but there, of course, similar to the Cardolin rate, there will be some outliers like Reboot and Amplify, where I'm not, I don't have them very often when I'm fighting Nob. So maybe I just happen to have them in a run that was good otherwise. I would not suggest picking these cards up if you. Potentially you're having trouble against that meteor strike as well. But Earth is good. Uh, let's scroll all the way down to the bottom. Yeah, multicast is not gonna do you any favors really. Heat sinks, nope. Fusion, nope. Reprogram, not necessarily. Thunder strike, tempest. Yeah, makes sense. Bunch of these off the lower side. So yeah, this is kind of just something you can use to uh, see what kind of cards may help you to not take as much damage in important fights that you may have coming up. Uh, what else we got? We also got this page that I kind of use to replicate um, what the site Spiralogs does, if some of you remember that site. Hasn't been updated in a long time now, but this is picked rate, well, number of times picked, number of time passed, pick rate. The average floor that the card is picked on, and the average floor you reach when you pick the card, and then after that it's distance, which is average floor reached minus average floor picked, can be something interesting to look at, can also be uh, filtered by character. And lastly there is average damage taken to enemies, uh, similar to that word quote that we had before, but instead of filtering it down by any particular enemy. Uh, you have the option to just filter by act here. They could just do act one or whatever, and it's cards and their average damage taken to those enemies. So that could be helpful for you as well, instead of like looking at it as a whole act, instead of looking at it as just one enemy. And that is pretty much it for that. Um, let me know if this is something that is helpful for you. Let me know if there are things that you would love to see added to this type of thing. Um, definitely a work in progress. Still working on it a bit. I'm gonna add boss relics back in and now choices if I can add it back in without having performance issues or maybe just have uh, another separate one don't have to have everything all together, but figured this was at a state that I could share with you guys, especially since I think the card pick rate tab would be very helpful for a bunch of people. I know there are tons of people, like if I was just starting uh, so the Spire today or recently starting, I definitely would like to have that baseline of kind of an idea of what cards are good and what situations without just being told it depends. So. This is for you guys, uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and just let me know in the comments uh, what you like about it or what you'd like to see added to it. Thank you.